All right, people, what is going on? Episode 438 of the First of Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller, and uh, today I want to talk strictly Atlanta Falcons because I think what Georgia Southern is doing against Ball State, I still think they're going to have a uh, they're going to have a fight on their hands with Ball State, but we'll talk about them a little bit later in the week. I want to talk about the Atlanta Falcons, and I'm not saying it's panic time. I don't think anything of that nature is really you know going right now. We're on two. But we lost two games that were very winnable, and it only takes a couple of plays to turn that around. Literally, it only takes a couple of plays to turn that around. I saw a lot of fight in both t- in both games from this team, but I also saw some miscues in this game as well. In the games as well, so we're going to talk about what can be done going forward, what needs to be done. If you see the title already, it's pretty much the main focus of what uh, we need to see when it comes to the Falcons. If this is your first time here, welcome. This is the first and frame rate show. I am Via Vola over here talking about George Southern Atlanta Falcons football. And Atlanta Falcons are 0-2, but they're not like 0-2 like uh, we're terrible 0-2. We're 0-2 because of mistakes have been made. Yes, some players didn't make plays. Some players didn't get an opportunity to make plays. Some things just went our way. Some things went our way. Some things that did not go our way. And there, these things can be cleaned up very simple. They're, they're very simple to clean up, and it can be very easily to do. Now, what I suggest is simple. It, it, it's basically on the screen right here. If you're watching it on the podcast, uh, uh, YouTube or Rumble, but if you're listening to it on the podcast avenue, it's in the title. They must use their playmakers as much as possible. There's just no other way around it. Um, you you have guys who I think is going to be a matchup nightmare for anybody. And and in some cases, we're not doing that. Now, I know Drake London had a handful of targets. I think he had like 74 yards on five catches. Um, But, you know, you you actually see what's going on here. And it kind of circles around Kyle Pitts for the most part. He only had three... uh, three targets and two catches so by the by the way that goes the ratio of that he could if he would have got like you know three times the the targets you're probably looking at six out of nine that could make a difference in the game uh also when it was time to uh when it was when it was time to throw the touchdown uh at the end of the game not the Hail Mary but the other one when he threw the Braylon uh, not Braylon Edwards Brian Edwards he had uh, Drake London one on one, and we, I will take that any day of the week. I don't care if I just have to throw it up there. You know who did that? And you know, and, and not many people are mentioning this. And I know it was preseason, but Desmond Ritter did it. He trusts Jared Bernhardt to do something with the ball, and it happened. And as a matter of fact, why we don't see more Jared Bernhardt? I know he made the fifty-three man roster, but I would like to see more of him on the field. I think he can be a playmaker. You know, I think he's one of the guys that can actually get open in the slot. I think he'll be a phenomenal weapon for what we're doing on this team. But I haven't seen him yet. If anybody else seen him, please let me know because I, I I haven't seen him at all. But I, I think he'll be good on the field at least once or twice. But when you have playmakers, you know, on the team, and that's one thing I credit Arthur Smith for. Arthur Smith put some guys on the field that can actually do something when given opportunity. He drafted Drake London. He got Kyle Pitts. He got he managed to um, obtain um, and re- and retain uh, Cordell Patterson. I, I still think that Tyler Algier can do some things when possible. You know, you also have Olamide Zacchaeus, who's another guy that's in the slot that can play. Brian Edwards can do some things as well. We got some guys. We have some players. It's just that for some reason we're not calling up plays or we're not designing plays for these guys to be um, successful. Now I know there's some plays for some because I know some people will come after me because I done been in certain in, in a couple of discords and they done jumped on me about this already that this team is not doing what they uh, but I feel this team is not doing what they need to do to put the ball in certain players' hands. But like I said, I know there's a couple of them that out there that got some, you know, got some uh, opportunities. Drake London is one of them. Cordell Patterson is another one. They had opportunities to make plays. But when you have guys like 
You're not passing the ball to Tyler Algier out the backfield. You're not getting more opportunities for Kyle Pitts. You know, all of my Zacchaeus is very fairly seeing some things. You know, I know Cordell Hodge got a, a couple. I think he got one or two catches. We're actually looking pretty good. But when you got guys that we know that could be matchup nightmares, we need to find a way to get the ball to them. You know, I think that could have been a difference in 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 winning or losing a couple of these games. Now, I know it's easy to throw everything on Marcus Mariota, and I still believe that he was the reason why we lost both of these games. Nobody can tell me otherwise, because I, I talked about this in another Discord myself, in two different Discords, as a matter of fact. I said that, you know, personally, I believe that Marcus Mariota lost these games for us. The fumble against the Saints, the interception of Brian Edwards, and everybody wants to hear talk about it's a team game. Yo, no, I, I agree. I'm not sitting there saying that it's a team game, it's a team loss, whatever the case may be. But when you have one or two plays that can decide the uh, can decide a game, you know, then then you can you can point the finger at one person. There's no, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't I don't know where there's this rule to saying that we cannot blame one person for for whatever, you know, because it happens. Let's just say, for instance, if Brian Edwards was open and he dropped the pass, are we going to blame somebody? What somebody did in the second quarter? No, I know everything is a, 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 a cumulative things that happened that leads up to the end of the game, but I'm not about to sit here and blame somebody missing a block that caused the sack on the, in the second quarter on him dropping the pass in the fourth. And I know some people will say, well, maybe it's because that put us in that situation. Yeah, but when you're in that situation, what are you supposed to do? I mean, you, you it is either – I'm not saying that I'm – I'm not sitting here saying that you can't have it both ways. I'm not saying it, it just can't be both ways. Now, I get it. If it's a collective situation where we couldn't get out of, let's say, for instance, if we played so bad and we were already down 28-3 to and we never was able to get back in the game, yeah, you can say that, okay, those things that happened in the second and third quarter was the reason why we got down because we couldn't stay close and stay competitive. But – if you're gonna get if you're gonna down these you know guys for negative things that happen early in the game, you gotta give them credit for positives that got us back in the game as well. You know, yeah, we 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 gave up a lot of points, but I'll be damned, this the defense and the special teams got us back in this game for the most part. The block punt, the scoop and score, the fumble, they got us back in the game. So I, yeah, you could give them credit both ways, but when it's time to take the lead. When it's time to possibly get, uh, you know, steal this game from uh, from the Rams, and some things just don't happen, yeah, you can you can point the finger at one person. So this is like when I say get the ball to playmakers. This is why I point the ball to get the the blame somewhat. Well, most of it on Mariota. You had Drake London one on one. You know what I'm saying? If you want it, look, if you want to say the fumble versus the Saints wasn't Mariota's fault, fine. Let's blame Drew Dalman. It's still on one person. It ain't on nobody else. But everybody has to do their part. I mean, everyone has to do their part. If everybody do their part, you're going to play pretty good, solid football. And for the most part, after they were down 28 to 3, the Falcons collectively pretty much did their part to get back in this game. So and for a team effort, yes. Now, you know, a chain is only strong as its weakest link. And if that weakest link is a problem, the whole team is going to fall. But I'm going to blame that weakest link. That weak link needs to be as strong as everybody else. So enough of that, Tyrant. I know I went off on a little tangent, but, you know, at some point, you, you can't. It's okay to point the finger at someone for messing up. It's not the end of the world if you do. But at the end of the day, you got to have one individual to make a play. And when that one person makes a play, we're going to give that person to collect you. Uh, collectively, we're going to give him all the praise because he deserves it. If Brian Edwards would have caught that touchdown pass, Mariota would have been, been the hero. Mariota, the one person that we would have gave all the praise to, would have been the hero so if he's going to be the hero for making the play let's criticize him for not making a play let's criticize him for not uh you know throwing that throwing that ball into double possibly triple coverage let's blame him for not seeing drake london one-on-one i mean like that that now that right there you can't have that both ways 
And I don't even want to talk about the Hail Mary. People want to say, oh, the O-line only gave him two seconds as soon as he hiked the ball. Nah, dude, was he was dancing for a little bit, and then he ran into a sack. Like I said from the beginning, if you got your playmakers to the left, you roll out to the left and throw the ball downfield and give you guys a chance. That should have been priority number one. As soon as you hiked the ball, you should just ran to the left. No, I can see if you had guys, you know, evenly distributed on the line of scrimmage, but you had three guys, Pitts, Cordell Patterson, and Drake London, three guys that I've said from the beginning that these guys are going to give you one or two things. It's going to be pass interference or completions. I still stand by that. Those three guys are six three and above. <laughs> pass interference or completions. Which one would you pick? I'm taking either one e anyway. That's another reason why I said Drake London one on one. I'm throwing it to him all day, all day. The dude six five, and I don't think nobody that's on the, the Rams a defense uh defensive secondary is even close to what he is. Jalen Ramsey maybe, and if you want to say Jalen, what Jalen Ramsey was, he was on Brian Edwards. He wasn't going to get over there to what Drake London was that fast. So what what I'm saying is like. This team can win games. I think the next three or four games they play are very winnable. But you got to find a way to get the ball in your playmaker's hands. I don't care if it's a screen, rub route, toss, you know, reverse, whatever the case may be. The ball needs to be in their hands. Cordell Patterson, they did a pretty good job of getting him the ball. They always do that. You know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, there's no big deal with that. that that's going to be a given. But when you got a guy who had five catches for 74 yards and made an acrobatic dive over, uh, over a defensive back, you got to give them more. You got to get more, you know, touches. You know, the, you know, at the end of the day, we need to figure out how we're going to be able to um, get the ball to these guys. Because I, I will say this, if this doesn't, if this continues, and like I said before, Mariota is an extension of the head coach. The quarterback is the, ex the extension of what the head coach wants on the field. And if his decision making or his lack of play down the stretch continues, I don't mind seeing Desmond Ritter in the in the ball game. At this point, you know, I, I'm not because three games. Okay, we're gonna have to make. We're gonna have to have a discussion. Gonna have to have a discussion if it's three games in and he's he's one of the main reasons why he's not doing what he's supposed to do as, as far as winning games. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I've said enough. I don't want to. I didn't want it to turn into a rant, but it is because it's very frustrating watching your team play as well as they did, even though they were down. They found a way to get back up against the Super Bowl champs. They played against a rival and almost won that game, and it, and it all broke down. So the, we're on the cusp of winning games and doing a lot better. But it's frustrating. It causes a situation where you could be um, frustrated like I am. I think I said enough. If you like this commentary, if you like this commentary, hit the like button. Share, like this podcast, share this, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Man, listen, we we can make something happen if we make a few plays down the stretch. That's just point blank. I understand people want to say it's a team effort, but one man can ruin a game. I don't care what anybody says. You can miss me with that. It can happen. Jalen Mayfield did that for us in the last few games in the beginning of the season. And everybody was blaming him and him only. So it's okay to do so. It's not the end of the world. But we will get back on track. We'll see what we do against Seattle. I will be back with, with another episode, possibly talking more about uh, Georgia Southern. I'm kind of excited about the Ball State game. I may be going to that game. I'm not sure yet. I'll see how things go as far as my work schedule. But I may be down there, and uh, I'll let you guys know, Eagle Nation, we may be down there. We could chop it up a little bit. All right, y'all. I'm getting up out of here. Y'all take it easy. Y'all be blessed. Peace. Thank you.